Maybe, maybe Mariah will say it. Are you going to say what you owe to Maxine? Hello. Um, well, well, thank you for that tremendous introduction, and thank you to everyone here. I, I can't tell you how honored I am to be here and to hear so much about Jim Houston and what his work was all about and how we have such a special legacy here in California and in the West Coast in general. We have such a special voice. Uh, but I, uh, I was telling Malcolm last week when I met him that I... I just might die because Maxine Hong Kingston is here, and uh, I read I read The Woman Warrior when I was 14 years old, and it's the book that made me want to be a writer. And uh, I'm, just, I'm so happy to be here and, and to meet you and to see Al Young again, who I met at Squaw Valley Writers or Community of Writers several years ago. I'm sure he doesn't remember me, but I very much remember meeting you. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, I am just, uh, I just want to thank everyone at Heyday. So, you know, Malcolm is tremendous, and so is Gail and Lily and everybody that I've met. I've finally been able to put faces to names and real voices to emails, which is really important in this day and age. <laughs> uh, and I'm just, I'm so happy to become a part of this tradition and to have my voice, you know, as a young writer, just to have my own voice acknowledged, but to be part of this larger conversation that we're always having as artists and especially here such the, the unique perspective that we have being so so unified as a community with so many different voices and so um with that uh like keep it short um i just wanted to thank everyone at heyday and i'm so happy that my family is here uh my nephew and my aunt are here somewhere but i really i want to thank my dad he's here tonight he's my date and <laughs> i'm just I've, in all ways, in literal and figurative and spiritual ways, I wouldn't be here without his support and with his love. So, um, I love you, Daddy. <laughs> uh, so, so, I just, I figured I would just read a very short section from the title story, and the collection is called Masha Allah, and uh, the, the collection is all based here, all of the stories take place here in the Bay Area, and they're all very much about families and people's work and the choices that we end up making through our work and through our families and through our devotions and our loves. And uh, the title piece is about a cab driver named Sullivan Gibbs who uh, picks up a cab fare and gets far more than he bargains for. And really all that he wants is to take his wife and his niece to Reno to go and gamble in the casinos and all these things happen and so he's just this is what he's thinking about at this moment in the towards the end of the story so. oh and he's he's thinking about his niece Cherise who's studying Arabic to see that <clears throat> when Cherise first moved in and Sully was still figuring out how to have an 18 year old in the house after 26 years of just him and his wife, Suze, the easiest thing to talk about was school. They'd sit across from each other in the kitchen or in the living room, him in his easy chair and her on the couch. Regardless of where she was, her books were always spread out around her. He'd ask her what she was studying, and she'd prattle on in Arabic for a while, occasionally finding a clean piece of paper and writing in thick lines and abrupt curls words that he had no idea what they meant. So he would smile and then ask, what else she was learning about. She'd talk about her different classes, and she'd say in psychology class, every morning her professor told her to be quiet for a few minutes and visualize how she wanted things to happen that day. At, the, at that time, Sully had thought it was crap, but Cherise looked so earnest, her eyes closed and her lips bent in a half smile, as she talked about imagining Arabic flying out of her mouth in her voice. She said every morning she visualized the calligraphy flowing out of her pen as if it were a geyser spewing ink. Masha Allah, she had said, and smoothed the curled edges of her notebook. Sully felt like he should have understood her, that he'd heard her say the words so many times he should have picked it up by now, as if by osmosis. But she saved him. She didn't make him ask her again what it meant. What God wills, Uncle Sully, what God wants, she had said, then turned back to her notebook and scribbled out the word for him to see. Masha Allah, he breathes as he rounds the corner onto Embarcadero, 
all the windows down and his neck cold. He said it like he remembers Cherie saying it, thick on that first syllable, his voice as sure as hers would be. He hopes he's saying it right. Thank you so much.